What's up guys? I got the new ECU today. It's a speed new ECU. A guy makes it from Poland. Here's the ECU itself. It has a built-in map sensor. It also has AC control, alternator control, and basically everything that you have in a stock car. Okay, so now let's remove the old ACU and install the new one. First, you have to take out this panel right here. And this plastic. This just pops up. Now there's a clip up there. And that just comes out very easily. You have to remove this one. And it should pop out. Now just pull back the lower mat. And there's the ECU under that cover. Your mind is all rusted up because the car was full of water. Now we just remove this piece. There's a couple of nuts that you have to remove and up there as well. Now with everything removed, there's your old ECU. Got the old ECU out. For now I put back the floor mat so I can work on here. Vacuum line for the map sensor. I have removed the charcoal canister for the EVAP system so I have this line free but you can also hook it up there just remove that cap i'm going to put it here just like this and through these ac lines into the cabin i have routed it somewhat for now hooked up everything to the new ECU, connected the vacuum line I think I'm going to delete a longer USB cable. Okay, so I have calibrated my sensors, my total position sensor, every sensor is working. And now let's see a first start. Okay, so for the idle, I went up here to the PWM duty cycle and I just lowered this one. This is the one when the engine is hot. You can see there the temperature 90 degrees or 89. And here I just lowered this value until I get, got it right. So you only have to move that one. Okay, so first let's remove the narrowband O2 sensor and install the new wideband sensor. Okay, so I got this one off. There was a couple of trickier bolts like this one on the bottom and this one, but you can have access to all of them. Now have a better look at the... But uh, I think you can do it without removing this. Okay, so in order to remove that one, they get usually pretty stuck. So I will use something like this or something longer and just put it on the edge here and hit it with a hammer a couple of times pretty hard, maybe from another angle as well and then they will just come out really easy. So Okay, so I did not touch the branch yet. I just hit it really hard. Let's see how easy it will come out, come off, if it will at least. And that's it. And after that, it just comes out with hand. And that's it. Here's your, here's your narrow band sensor. 
Okay, so here's the new wideband auto sensor. I got this one used for a little bit cheaper. This one is a AM38 and 8460. So yeah, let's install the auto sensor first. Okay, so I made a quick ground cable for the AFR gauge. I'm going to mount it here. Okay, so I ran through the wires. This one is uh, from another project, so these two is the new, only new ones. This one is a chassis ground which goes to there, and this one is the sensor wire from the wide band auto sensor. And I just made a cut in this one so I can slide through all of them and just push it in so it seals a little bit better. So that's how the final look is. Got the airbox back in and we are done outside, so let's go inside and install the gauge. Okay, so the sensor fit perfectly inside the vent housing, so now let's wire it up. Okay, so your new connector will have in place of this blue a red one, and uh, you need to hook up to this black one uh, chassis ground, which I got from the outside. This is the signal wire, the white one, which is a 0 to 5 volt output, and this for you it's a red, this is a 12 volt power, so yeah, I just got the 12 volt power from the cigarette lighter, run up all the way here, there, this is the outside chassis ground and this is the signal going to the ECU. Okay, so for my ECU, if I want to connect wideband, I have to switch a jumper to wideband position there's a jumper on the board from stack to wideband I have to switch and I have to connect the the signal wire and connect it to the 4AB pin here we have the pins I have to connect it to the 4AB down there ok so it's working pretty good these values are used for the calibration for the wideband and uh, now it's perfectly matching with the gauge. Okay, so this is how you install the standalone ECU and the EFR gauge. From now on I can start to learn to tune the car. I'm going to, I think I'm going to get the tune analyze, which is a live uh, tuner for you. It's uh, 70 bucks I think, but uh, I think it it's worth it because I don't want to put it on the dyno and pay a lot for that one as well. Maybe when I get the turbo, then I will dyno the car. But for now, thanks for watching and see you guys later.